Hey, online family. My name is Vince. It's one of my roles to oversee and steward the online community here. And we're excited that you're joining us today as we are in week three of the Do Something Church series. Uh, I know that when you're engaging with us online, sometimes it could be a little distracting. There might be kids running around. But I want to invite you to center yourself today, focus on what God wants to say to you, and join us after the service for a quick conversation. every single day. How many, can, how many can say amen to that? Come on, let's sing this together. I will carry beneath my shame. Who could carry that high away? It was my tool till I met you. second just to lift up a shout if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord today. How many of you are glad to be in the house? Seriously. Did God do anything for anyone this week that you're grateful for, that you just know he's good for, that he didn't have to do? Do me a favor and tap your neighbor. Tell your neighbor what God has done in your life. Take 10 seconds. I'm 
gonna teach you guys a new song today. And all it's doing, we're just singing about the goodness of God together. Is that all right? It's very simple. Can you guys sing with me? Who's gonna sing with me? Can I get a show of hands? Who's gonna sing with me? Okay, I got a few singers. I got a few standards. That's cool too. I got my singers right here. Any singers up here? All right, hands together like this, come on. If God has done something good to you, I want you guys to sing this out. Say, Yahweh, Yahweh, holy is your name. I don't want to take it in vain. Say, Yahweh, Yahweh, holy is your name. I don't want to take it in vain. You guys got that? Raise your hand if you got it. If you got somebody standing next to you not clapping or singing, nudge them a little bit. You got my permission. Hands together, come on. Now sing it with us. Here we go. Sing Yahweh, sing Yahweh. Yahweh. Say holy is your name. Holy is your name.
Let's lift the name of Jesus in this place. Let's lift the name of Jesus Christ in this house. Your name be magnified. Your name be glorified, Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus Christ. You reign in this place, in this house. Have your way, God. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Why speak the name of Jesus? And every dark addiction starts to break.
bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Do you believe it? His presence is heaven to us. Can we just lift our hands together as we embrace his presence? Let's worship him from our heart with conviction. Sing it out if you know. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Hallelujah. Redeemer of my past and present wrongs. Holder of my future days to come. So for that, we sing, your presence is heaven. Jesus, we've come covered by him and blessed by him. As we enter into your presence, we invite you to have your way in our lives. 
We yield to your ways. We yield to your spirit. In this moment, as your word tells us, may we decrease so that you may increase. So right now, Lord, we just take a moment as, just, just, to, just to pause, to decrease. We decrease the worry. We decrease the pride. We decrease the anxiousness. And may your spirit abound and increase now. Your love, may it abound. May your joy increase right now. May your perfect shalom peace that transcends all understanding, even though I'm going through a storm, may that peace increase right now. That's what we pray. We worship you. We love you. We bless you. It's in the name of Jesus, the whole family shouted amen. Come on, shout amen one more time and give God praise. Amen, 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 amen. Why don't you take a few seconds, greet your neighbor, meet someone next to you, introduce yourself, maybe say hello. My name is Travis. God bless you, uh, online church. So glad you're with us, wherever you're joining us from, or listening to us, or you got it on in the car somewhere, or you're in the living room. God bless you. Put it in the chat. Let us know where you're from. Go ahead and grab a seat. God bless you, Rock family. Uh, my name is Travis. I'm the campus pastor here at Rock Church Point Loma and want to welcome you. Let me be one of the first people to welcome you to uh, Sunday to do church together. It's my favorite day, man. If it's your favorite day, would you just put your hands together? Let's thank the Lord if it's your favorite day. Good to see so many friends and family and some new faces. Uh, if you're new to the church, here's what we want you to know. Uh, we want you to get plugged into the life of the church, not just come and worship. And, and I met my new friend Roman, trying to get him plugged into a men's group. And that's what we want to do. Come Sunday, because Sunday's incredible, but then get into the life of the church. Here's an easy way to do it. Just text the letters PL. That's our initials, our location, Point Loma, to 52525. And you can let us know how we can pray for you. You can find out how to get plugged into a group. You can find out what's going on around the city because so much is going on in and through this church for the glory of Jesus. We want you to be a part of that, so let us know. That's one way that you can be a part of what God's doing. Uh, when we start our time together, before the message uh, comes, and our pastor's got a great message as we continue in our series, the Do Something Church, um, we start our time with, with worship. And I'll tell you a quick story. Yesterday, I, I, did, I facilitated a wedding and. Of course, Howard. Howard already went in the back. Oh, my. He's already got his feet kicked up. He just did his thing, you know. But me and Howard, he did the music, and I facilitated the, the, the wedding, and it was a beautiful service. And at, at the end, after the speeches are done, and by the way, how many get nervous for the speeches, right? Just the other, I just get nervous watching other people do the speeches. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know when I get here. It's just roll the dice. You may get something good. You may not. But after the speeches were done was the dance floor. And... Uh, the music started playing, and my wife and I, we just started getting, you know, a little bit, not too much, don't do too much, but enough. In fact, one of the, the aunties said, I, you know, I, I wasn't going to dance, but I saw the pastor's wife dance. I figured I could come out and dance too. So we're dancing, and everybody's getting down to the dance floor, but there, there's always one family member that doesn't dance, but captures everything on the phone. Mm-hmm. It was this, 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 this person right here, and they were there. Like, we were dancing, and they were on the dance floor not doing what the dance floor was made for, but they were just right here with all three Instagram followers on Instagram Live, and then right here, look, look at me, look at me and everybody. It was, it, was, it was hilarious. He never left the dance floor. He was there the whole time, every song, with the phone, just like this. And you know, a couple, and I was trying to get out of the phone view, but sometimes I feel like we can be in God's house, but not do what God's house is meant to do, which is to worship. And we look and go, well, it's just for those people. No, it's for everybody. A worship is, is an opportunity for every single person to lean into the presence of God. It says this in Psalm 150, verse 6. Let everything that has breath, praise God. Not those with lots of breath, not those that have been coming and they got more breath than others, or not just those that came in weak today struggling with a little breath. Let everybody that has breath do what you're supposed to do, praise God. And so this next moment is our giving moment, which is an act of worship. So let everybody here take an opportunity to say, Lord, I'm gonna worship you with my gifts. I'm gonna worship you with my breath, my hands. I didn't just come to church to watch other people do what we're meant to do here. I'm gonna be a part of it. Come on, Jesus. And so here's a few ways that you can partner with the Lord and give as an act of worship. You can text to give to 52525 and go on our website at sdrot.com slash give, or you can go on our website or giving boxes. There's so many ways you can do it. There's a QR code. We just want you to partner with Jesus. He's designed you to be a worshiper. Let everybody that has breath praise God. Why don't you bow your heads with me? Let's pray for the giving. Jesus, thank you that we get to be generous people. And we don't just come to watch other people do what you've designed us to do. We want to be worshipers too. 
Because your word tells us, let everybody that has a breath praise God. So we praise you right now with our lips, with our words, with our hands, with our attention, our time, with our families, with our gifts. Take the giving, the tithes, the offering, and the over and the above, and whatever else someone's giving today as an act of worship. May you glorify the Son with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to welcome everybody here at our fourth annual Military Heroes Festival. We have a great time coming out here both last year and this year. It's a great time. It's a blessing to come here today and serve the military, being an ex-veteran and seeing these people and families. This entire event is really just saying thank you to our military and their families by meeting some of the practical needs and to bring the hope of Jesus in our community as well. We brought the Rock Church and USO together as well as Liberty Station for this event. Rock brings an amazing group of volunteers and USO gives us that access to active military so we can bless them today. We're both in a group together and we're here specifically to serve military spouses. It gives us an opportunity to pray with them and show that there are other smaller communities that they can get into. So since this is a free event, we are so thankful for volunteers and resources like First Five San Diego that donate their time, talent, and efforts to make an event like this happen. are here to help our military service members and their families because they're the heroes every day, day in, day out, for what they do in their sacrifices. They may be in places where they need a little uplift and a little morale boost. And with our organizations working together, we are there to help them do that. We'll always be with them by their side. What's up, church? What's up, church? Hey, we are. Uh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm Miles McPherson. Welcome to the Rock Church. We want to welcome all our campuses and all the people around the county who helped, especially yesterday with our Military Heroes event. Um, I, there's three groups I want to applaud. One are the, all the military that we celebrated. Can we give them a big hand? God bless y'all. Uh, if you're in the military in any of our campuses, if you could stand up, we want to acknowledge you and celebrate you or your families in the military. Thank you very much. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. Thank you, thank you. And, and let me encourage all of y'all, if you ever see someone in the military in the airport or Starbucks or whatever, just uh, go up and tell them thank you. They're, they're giving up their time, their life to serve us, to protect us. And just tell them thank you for their service. Can I get amen? Amen. 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 Uh, I also want to thank all the staff and volunteers that served yesterday. Uh, Pastor Jesse, let's give all them people a big hand. God bless y'all. And, and then the video crew, the video crew was up till four in the morning to make that video for y'all. So let's give them a big hand. Come on, church. Come on, church. Amen. Let's all stand up. Let's all stand up. Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you so much for our church. 
uh, and, and the partnerships we have with all the community. Thank you for the USO, Liberty Station, and all the other partners for serving with us and giving us the opportunity to serve with them. We pray you bless them as well. Uh, may we continue to do something. Everyone say do something. do something. May we continue to do something to be a blessing uh, to San Diego and beyond. And bless the message today. Bless our time in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn to someone next to you and say, do something. <laughs> Let's see your Bibles. Let's see it. On the count of three, say word. One, two, three, say word. Turn to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. I went to the University of New Haven in Connecticut, and on our football team, we, it was a Division III football, which is somewhat like junior, uh, uh, junior college. It was a very small school, 2,500 people. And we had a guy on our team named Ray Mahinzik. Ray was about 6'8", I don't know, 1,400 pounds. <laughs> I don't know how much he weighed. He was just big. Very tall, very, just big. He's like Goliath. And then we had another guy named uh, Kevin who was 6'4", 240. And, and that was pretty average for the big guys. And, and these guys weren't just big. They were athletic. They lifted weights. They ran. They threw people around every day. And they got a job as, a bou as bouncers to a bar in, the, in New Haven. And... I don't even know if I had ever been to a bar when I was in college. So I was like, wow, you guys work at a bar. And, and they were kind of old. They were kind of 37, 38 years old anyway in college. But, um, uh, <laughs> and I remember them telling me this story. And this story is like 40, let me see how old am I. This story, story is over 40 years old. I never forgot this because of one line that is said in the story. So they're bouncing, and literally, Ray was like 6'8", six, 6'7", six, and Kevin was 6'4", athletic big guys. There's a difference between being big and being athletic big, and there's a difference between being strong and athletic strong. Very big difference. A lot of it has to do with your base and how you can, your core and how you can leverage and throw stuff around versus just lifting a weight. Well, these guys threw people around all day. And so they weren't just big, they were athletic big and athletic strong. And this guy comes up to him and he's drunk. And, you know, alcohol and intoxication or whether you're high gives you a different level of courage that's not realistic. <laughs> you know, you see things that aren't there and you think things that aren't true and you say things that you shouldn't say. And so, can I get amen? amen. Those are all your druggies. Look at all the druggy people out here I got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm glad you're in church, though. I'm glad you're in church. I'm with you. I'm that, I'm, I was that guy. I'm that guy, right? So this guy, because I'm, and he starts talking all this trash to, I mean, little guy. He's like 5'10", 5'11", talking trash to Kevin and Ray Mahizek. And, and, and he's like, I'm going to get you. I'm going to beat y'all up. And they're just standing there kind of laughing. And here's what the line was. He says, you don't know what you're saying. You don't know what you're saying. Everyone say you don't know what you're saying. We started this series called Do Something two weeks ago. We talked about that we have to be a do something church. And we talked first week about the plan to do something, which is count, walk, ask, love. Everyone say count. count. Say walk. walk. Say ask. ask. Say love. Yeah. Count is take a numerical assessment of the pain. How many people are homeless? How many bars? How many people get a divorce? How many people in jail? You walk to them. You ask, how can I help you? And then your response is love. That was week number one. Week number two is the purpose of doing something, to build the kingdom of God. And week number three today is the power you need to build the kingdom of God. Amen. You need power. And every single one of us is in a spiritual battle. And if you think you could beat the devil... By just working harder, you don't know what you're saying. It's just, it's, it's insaneness. You can't win a spiritual battle without prayer, without the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, without God in your life, because he's the one who fights the battle. 
Matter of fact, we were just singing the song here in Point Loma. I don't know what song y'all were singing. And it was, I am so bad with songs. It's so, so, like I'm a numbers guy. I can remember numbers. Literally, when I was 10 years old, my, my dad, we used to go, out, or, uh, we used to um, say to my dad, Dad, let's go for a ride. And, and all of us, five kids, and, and we just go in the car and drive around New York City or Long Island, wherever we were from. And we were driving. And I would say, Dad, give me a number, and I'll remember the number when we come back. I can remember numbers. I remember the number right now, 143. I was 10 years old, and we drove across the railroad tracks right near our house. And I said, when we come back, I'm going to tell you the number. And I still remember the number. I can't remember the, number, the words to the song we just sang five minutes ago. <laughs> I had to write it down, okay? <laughs> so here's what it is. G, we, we, we just sung a song. I don't know what y'all sang in the other campus. I should, though. We declared Jesus over our life. Your name is power, Jesus. Everyone say Jesus. Jesus. Your name is healing, say Jesus. Jesus. Your name is life, say Jesus. Jesus' Jesus name is powerful. Amen. Every single one of us is in a spiritual battle. In other words, you have demonic influences in your life, demonic beings in your life that are real. They're around, you just can't see them. They're real. Demons are real. I was, I was uh, uh, in Encinitas yesterday, and the Hell's Angels ro- rode by me and my wife, uh, about maybe 20 of them on motorcycles. A Hell's Angel is a demon. There are no angels in hell. But the demons that are in hell used to be angels in heaven. These are real things, and they have real influence over your life. They message you constantly, day and night. And this power that you have is useless against them. Look what Jesus said in, in, in Acts chapter 8, in, in, in Acts chapter 1. He says, watch this. He says, Being, this, is, this is Jesus before he ascended to heaven. He died, rose from the dead. He's with his disciples. They've been praying. And he says, and being assembled together with them, he, Jesus, commanded them to not depart. Say not. not. He says, don't go to Jerusalem and do ministry yet. But wait for the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Do not do any ministry yet. Until you have the Holy Spirit, which he said, you have heard from me, for, the, for, for truly John, bapti- John baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And then it says, then you shall receive power. I don't say power. power. From the Holy, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the earth. Watch this. Jerusalem, San Diego, Samaria, Judea, and, and the ends of the earth. San Diego, California, and the United States around the world. All that means, these were three words, uh, uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the end of the earth. All that means is everywhere. That's all that means. Don't get caught up in those specific places. All that means is everywhere. You shall be witness to me around the world. But you have to wait for power. You have to wait for power. And if you don't pray for power and don't exercise and leverage the power of God in your life, you are going to lose a spiritual battle. It doesn't mean you won't make money. It doesn't mean you won't get some girls in your bed. It doesn't mean you won't, you won't get a job or, or whatever it is you want in your world. That, it doesn't mean that won't happen. Matter of fact, the devil will bless you with stuff and God will let him bless you with stuff just to show you it's not going to work. <laughs> So it's, it's not about that. It's like, well, I, you know, I got a house. I'm healthy and I'm this. I don't need God. Huh, you think that's all life is too, life? There's so much more to that. That's a deception. It comes and goes. I was just listening to, I think it was Selena Gomez. I think it was her. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> she, was, she was at an award show. She was holding the award that she won. And she said, I had Everything. Everything. And, and don't quote me on this part because I don't, it was either I was empty or it was nothing, but she was dying inside. She was dying inside. And so don't think that the things of the world are what you need. It's the power, it's not even, I got to get saved. I need the power of God because you can pray and get saved and go right back to what you were doing. I did that for five years. You need the power of God to change your life if you're going to do something in the kingdom of God. And so I want to talk about power today. Now, in this story we're going to read today, it's about Jesus casting out a demon, and they start accusing him of casting out demons by the power of the devil. Because they didn't want to admit that he had the power of God. And he says, well, <laughs> there are two kingdoms we talked about last week. Kingdom of God, kingdom of, kingdom of the devil. And 
The, a kingdom divided itself against itself can't stand. So he, he's going to talk about binding up the strong man. Remember Raymond Isaac and Kevin? You, you can't get in the club unless you move those bouncers. And if the devil's got you bound up, which all of us have, are bound up to some degree, all of us have some spiritual stronghold on our life to some degree, if we get, unless we get free spiritually, you could do all the self-help stuff you want. By the way, don't, you don't want to be, you don't want to have, read self-help books so you could be the best version of yourself. You want to be God's version of yourself. <laughs> and that takes spiritual revelation and spiritual freedom. And so here's what we're gonna, in, this, in this story we're going to read, here's some things you're going to notice. You're going to notice that both Satan and God have kingdoms. We talked about that last week. God has a kingdom and Satan has a kingdom. There are no other kingdoms. There's no other kingdoms. The, in, in Saudi Arabia, the, the sheik, he don't have a kingdom. That's not his. <laughs> Belongs to somebody else. The only kingdom is God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom, spiritual kingdoms. We are just used in that expressions of that. Next one, it says, both God and Satan have the power to rule their kingdoms. You are either influenced by God's power or you are influenced by Satan's power. You are either leveraging God's power or leveraging Satan's power. Those are the superior powers. Our physical power, this is nothing compared to, the, to, to spiritual power. Spiritual power, <laughs> spiritual power create the heavens and the earth. Spiritual power can make you sick. Next one, both... Satan's power places you in bondage. We're going to talk about that in a minute. How many of y'all want to be from Satan's power? <laughs> Nobody? Nobody wants to be free from Satan's power? Let me say that one more time. I'll say it slow. I'll say it. I'm sorry. For all y'all watching on video, nobody here raised their hand. So I must have communicated unclear. That's on me. That's on me. That's on me. So everybody say, Pastor, that's on you. Okay, like Scarface, I take your bullets. I'm good, I'm good, okay. <laughs> Feel all you remember that, Cheryl. Okay. How many of y'all, <laughs> how many, how many want to be set free from Satan's power? Can I get an amen? All right, there you go, okay. My bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Woo! Thought I, I thought I took a wrong turn on Rosecrans. That is the wrong church. Okay, okay, okay. Next one. God's power sets you free. How many of y'all want to be free? Come on now. Come on now. Okay, okay. Let's, let's read the story. Let's read the story. <laughs> y'all awake now. Y'all awake now. Okay, Luke chapter 11, verse 14 says, Luke eleven fourteen. 14, as Jesus was casting out a demon, and by the way, demons do possess people, you can be a Christian and be demonized. What does that mean? You can be a Christian and be heavily influenced by a demon because accepting Christ into your life does not mean you listen to Christ. Amen. Theoretically it does, but it's like getting married and go cheat on your wife. You made a vow, but then you walked away. Okay, so you can accept Christ in your life and the devil go, hey, I got something better. And you go, huh, huh, whoa, whoa. It happens all the time. That's not, I'm not talking about, that's not demon possession. When a demon comes to live in you, I've seen demon possession. I've been a part of exorcism. This stuff is for real. As Jesus was casting out a demon and it was mute, the demon caused this guy to not be able to speak. Couldn't declare the glory of God in his life. Ooh. So it was when the demon had gone out of, the, that the mute spoke and the multitudes marveled. So when the demon came out, the guy spoke. Okay. And it says, some of them said he cast out demons by bills above the rules of the demons or the devil. In other words, he's not legit. He's acting on behalf of the, of the devil, which doesn't make any sense. Others testing him sought him a sign from heaven, but he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, every kingdom divided itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against itself falls. If Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom, the devil has a kingdom. A kingdom is any place under the rule of a king. Okay? How will his kingdom stand? Because you say I cast out demons by Beelzebub. If I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons, whoo, watch this, by the finger of God. 
<laughs> this is why, this is, Jesus was funny. You had to pay attention because sometimes he was funny in serious situations. This is one of them. He said, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, I don't, God, I don't even need the hand of God. I don't even need the kick of God. Just a finger, just a finger. Blick, I'm going to flick him like a fly. <laughs> Surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. The kingdom of God was, was evident by the power of God. What is the kingdom of God evident in your life? It has to be the power of God, not the information about God. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't have information. You absolutely need information. But it's not about information. This is not a, this is not a, a, a university. It's the kingdom of God. And when the, God, when the God of the universe who created the universe comes in you and the spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead comes in you, something has to change. Something has, yeah, you, ever see, you ever see those you, ladies, and, and, and we guys notice this too, but ladies especially. When you have a girlfriend, she's one of your friends, and y'all are going about your business, and then one day she's like, <laughs> you're like, what happened? You met somebody. <laughs> Say, ladies, can I get a hey if you know what I'm talking about? You, you know what I'm talking about? Yes? No? No. All ladies say, hey. If you know what I'm talking about, all ladies say, hey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He meets, she meets some guy and, some, and all of a sudden she's like, she can't think straight. She can't see. You know, all of a sudden this, she smells everything and, you know, all that, all that stuff. Something changed. And that's just some, for some knucklehead that in six months she's going to realize he's a knucklehead. <laughs> potentially, potentially. But watch this. When a, but when God comes into your life, something has to change. When a strong man, remember Ray Mahinzik and Kevin? You can't get in the club unless you remove 500 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal from the front door. When a strong man, huh, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. The, 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 the bar hired those two guys to keep the, the bar safe. We won't put you out front because we know ain't nobody in New Haven going to overpower you two dudes. You, you, you two dudes are ugly enough, they'll scare everybody away. <laughs> but when a stronger man comes... Not one got some alcohol who thinks he's stronger. But when a stronger man comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him what all his armor in which he trusted and divides the spoils. Listen, unless a stronger man comes into your life, and I'm not talking about a human being, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit in your life, you will be bound up by the devil all your life. And you will think you're fine. By the way, the devil's not going to, the devil is, I, can, I don't want to say never, never, but never going to go, I and Satan. <laughs> I am going to destroy your life. When my, I was a real jealous boyfriend. My wife was sitting over here. When, um, when we dated, I don't, if a guy looked at her, like we went to the club, dancing or whatever, and some guy looked at her, I would say, just wait here, honey. And I would go over to the dude. This is, this was, I was that guy. And I wasn't drunk. I was just crazy. <laughs> I was like, what's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Thank God I never got in a fight. But I was, and, and one time I went to the bathroom, came back, and this dude was talking to her. And I sat like right here, and I'm like this. So, you know, and I kind of, you know, we had a little, little short discussion. He left. But in my mind, <laughs> in my mind, he is not trying to convince her to be faithful to me. Can I get him in, fellas? Hey, he's trying, he, he trying to get the phone number. You know, he's trying to hook himself up. So at the end of the night, him and his two friends came back. I was like, let's go outside. I was, thank God, thank God, uh, nothing happened. How, because I knew their intent was 100% not the benefit of our relationship. The devil never has your best intent in mind, ever, ever, ever. He will entice you. He will, he will give you things you think you want, money, sex, whatever it is, whatever it is your fancy. Well, let's go, let's go, let's go. And you'll be like, oh, this is good. This is good. I don't need to go to church. I don't need God. I don't need the Bible. And then all of a sudden, bam. There was, I remember I, I saw this on the Discovery Channel probably 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, maybe last week. I can't remember. <laughs> it was this turtle. 
and it was, I, don't, I, I don't know what kind of turtle it was, a big one. And he, had, and he sat in the bottom of the, of the ocean or the lake or the pond, or maybe it was a fish tank, but he was on the bottom. <laughs> and he opened his mouth. And he had a little false tongue in his mouth. And he would just do this with his tongue. Like a worm. It mimicked a worm. And this little fish is swimming right outside, you know. And you can see the fish thinking, dang, it's like right there. And the fish are looking around like, anybody else want to get that worm? And it's like, and it's just like, this worm, like, come on, get it, come on, get it, come on, get it. And he's like, and the fish is like, why? This is too easy. Something ain't right. This is too good to be true. It ain't, it's too, and the fish was just like, eh, eh. And then he kind of got close, and all of a sudden, bam, got him. That's what the devil does. It's like, come on, come on. Now, I'm going to say something about the ladies, and then I'm going to say something about the guys. So equal opportunity offender. <laughs> ladies, you got that smooth talking, guys? Sounds all good. Got a nice smile. He works out. Works at Starbucks. <laughs> got a great career in Frappuccinos. Goes to the Rock Church. You could say so to all of that. Yeah. Ladies, I give, you, I give you one foolproof way to at least step one of screening a dude. Just say to him to his face, in a public place, in the daytime, where the sun is out, you can see him. <laughs> Pray for me right now. Watch this. If he says anything close to, now I lay me down to sleep. <laughs> I pray my soul to the Lord to keep. Or, or, dear Lord, bless my food. I'm not saying walk away, but, but you can say, okay, let's pause because I need someone that's going to invest spiritually into my life. So can we go there together? By the way, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying don't go out with the dude, but at least now you know. At least, and, 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 and fellas, same thing. You got some girl, she got a nice little huh, rubber band, skirt, whatever. Well, I don't know what you call those things. Huh? What do you call those things? It's like, huh, right there. They end right over the hump. I'm not saying anything wrong with that. I'm not saying anything wrong with that. I'm just saying if that's the, if that's the extent of the relationship, if that's the extent of what she's bringing to the table. And it, you missed this whole point. And so he says, when the stronger man comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor, which he has trusted and divides his force. So a couple things. Let's, let's, let's read. Number one in your notes. We're all in some kind of bondage. We're all in some kind of bondage. You have to decide what kind of bondage has the devil put on you. And I'm going to tell you whatever it is, it's subtle, it's spiritual, and you probably don't see it as much as somebody else. You're scared to succeed. Some people have succeeded so long, uh, failed so long. Listen to what I'm telling you because I'm talking to somebody in this room, somebody in the campus. You have failed so often you are scared to succeed. And when you get close to succeeding or someone gives you a path to success, you will sabotage it because you're more comfortable in failure. Now I know you're more comfortable in failure. You're more comfortable, listen to what I'm telling you, you are more comfortable being a victim and blaming somebody else instead of taking responsibility for your life. Watch this. If the only way you can be a victim is to, is to identify a villain. And once you identify the villain, it's on them, not you. Now you're free to just stay in your failure. That's, a, that's bondage. And by the way, a spiritual stronghold is wrong thinking pattern. What I just described is a wrong thinking pattern. you thinking, I can't do it, I can't. And you don't even know it. You just happen to happen all the time. You can even ask your friends, could that be me? Because you got talent. And one of the ways you can know it's you is that you can look around you and see all these people who are succeeding. They're doing a the job. They're happy. They're pursuing stuff. They're, fit, they're, 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 they're uh, um, excelling in some field even though it's not perfect. It's not linear. They, they have wins and losses, wins and losses. But they're still going and still optimistic. And you see them. And in your heart you know, I can do that. But yet you don't. Why? Maybe because you're just not trying. 
And I'm going to tell you, I have failed miserably throughout my life. Failure is way overrated. Oh, let me say this. I'm sorry. The pain of failure is way overrated. Matter of fact, next week we're going to talk about the pain of doing something. But the pain of failure is way overrated. What I mean by that is that you think, I got to avoid failure. No, you don't. You got to walk through failure. Count all joy when you encounter various trials. The Bible says count all joy when you encounter various trials. And so you have to realize what kind of bondage of the devil. Am I scared to succeed? Am I scared to try? Am I, am I, am I blind to my talent? Am I blind to my town? I, I, I told you I went to Division Three school, and I mean, it was, it was like a big high school. And I remember when I was my freshman year, my coach had played and tried out in the NFL that previous year. So he was in shape. He was a stud. He, like, he was the man. And he had a party at his apartment, just all us, our, my, our position, defensive backs. And he brought me into his back room and he pulled a contract, uh, pulled a drawer out from his desk and pulled out an NFL contract and he said to me, I'm a freshman. I'm like 170 pounds. He said, and he pulled out an NFL contract, said, you can get one of these. I'll never forget that. And I was sitting there going, I just was looking at the paper. I was like, you mean NFL people touch this paper? <laughs> I was like, I, I was tripping on the paper. <laughs> he said, you can get one of these. And he saw something I thought I saw. There's people in your life who see something in you that you don't see. You need to find those people. Because the devil doesn't want you to see it. The devil doesn't want you to see how much God loves you. He doesn't want you to see what God can do in your life. He wants you to think, I got to do all of this. Let me tell you something. You got to work like it all depends on you and you got to pray like it all depends on God. And that's how it happens. Number two, number two. I, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, um, Look at, look at John eleven forty four. 44. Give me that verse. I'm sorry. John eleven forty four. 44. Lazarus was died and was in the tomb. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. They, you ever see a mummy? They wrap their face. They wrap their arms. They wrap their legs. That's how the devil got you bound up. You can't walk. You can't move. You can't see. You can't talk. He don't, as though you should. God set me free. We're going to pray in a minute. We got, let me get to the end because our time is right now. Let's go to the next one. We're going to keep going. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can come back to the next service if you want to get, get this again because I think it's, it's good. It's good. Come on. Everyone say it's good. Okay. 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 Go to the next point. We're going to keep going. You can receive God's power to be free. We're going to do that in a minute. You can receive God's power to be free. Look what the Bible says in chapter, John chapter 8. John chapter 8 says that Jesus said though, to, to, to the Jews, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples and you shall know the truth. Oh, say truth. Say truth. truth. If you're from Jamaica, my family's from Jamaica, West Indies, Kingston, say truth. truth. And you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Go back to the, the definition of freedom. I think I put it before this. Yes, freedom, the absence of necessity. Coercion, the absence of coercion or constraint in choice of action. In other words, God wants to set you free where you can be in the mall and, and you can see someone in the mall. Trust me, do this. And God can put someone on your heart. How many of you have ever seen someone in the mall and God put a totally str total stranger on your heart to help them somehow? Anybody? Uh, can I get it? Okay, let's do this. Elbow above the ear. Can I give me a, there we go. There we go. You're at the grocery store. You're at the 7-Eleven. You're at the whatever. And, and you just, uh, I'm supposed to do something. Do it. Now, I, 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 I'm, I'm a bad example when I say bad example, because I talk to everybody, so it's easy for me to talk to people I don't know. Some of y'all don't. It's not, and that's, there's nothing wrong or right. It's just personality. My wife is, my wife don't want to talk to people. She knows. <laughs> I'm only kidding, I'm only kidding. My wife's like, she, you know, she don't, she don't talk strangers if she don't have to. And then that's her personality. It's just different. No, one's not better than the other. So when I say stuff I do, it may be easier for me because that's how God made me. However, God may put something on your heart to talk to somebody and it's not your thing. Too bad. Get over yourself. Because God tells me to do stuff that's not easy for me to do. And guess what? Too bad. I got to get over myself. And God may put someone on your heart and says, to pay for their food. To go up and say, how can I pray for you? 
Or to go up and say, I say this to all the time when I see mothers with little kids, God bless you, mom. Just say, God bless you, mom. I've never had a mom go, get out my face. Who are you, who are you talking to? <laughs> no, they always go, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you understand how this is hard work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they know. They know. And sometimes it's like I'm looking at moms, and, you know, a lot of times they're just doing their thing, but sometimes they are tripping. Like they're at that, that point where they can go loco, right? Like, take them. Just take them. <laughs> Been there. Been there. So, whew, this is getting way out of hand. Number three. Number three. You can leverage God's power to set others free. Matthew 10, 55, 8. We're going to pray right here in a minute. Jesus, these 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them saying, do not go to the way of the Gentiles and do not enter the city of Samaritans, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and say, as you go, preach saying, "Woo, the kingdom. Last week's sermon, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Same thing is at hand. The rule of God is here. You can actually receive, walk into, live into, dwell in, thrive in the kingdom under the rule of God. Next, next verse. I think that's the end of it. Heal the sick. Everyone say heal the sick. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Say cleanse the lepers. Yeah. Raise the dead. Raise the dead. are people who raise the dead all around, all around the world. I ain't never seen it. Yeah, you don't because we don't live in a country where people believe that kind of stuff. We don't live in a country where people... Can, they can go to the doctor instead of pray. You know, some places around the world, they don't have the medicine we have. All they got is prayer. Cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely you give. Freely you have received, freely you give. I'm going to pray in a minute. And I love praying for healing. And one of the things I love praying about is for women to have babies who can't have babies. And I pray for God to open wombs many, many times and I will not tell you it's attributed to my prayer, but I've seen many, many women who couldn't have babies get pregnant. Amen. So, what I want to do just now is I want to pray for healing. And, and I want you to think, as the music's playing, if you think of something that is ailing in you, anything, even a relationship, or ailing in someone else. I just want you to be thinking about that. And I'll lead you in a prayer to actually ask God to heal. And all healing means is to establish kingdom alignment. To make something work the way it was intended to work. That's it. So if you're sick, that means something's off. And you want to bring it back to kingdom alignment. Okay, the eye was meant to see. If, it can't, if you're blind, it means your eye's not working the way it was intended. God creates everything with specific purpose. And salvation is a healing event. It's the ultimate healing event. It's the healing of your relationship with God. God created you to have a relationship with him. We sin and push God away. And God says, I want my kids to be in relationship with me. That's all salvation is. It's not complicated. But it all is the result of the power of God in your life. So I'm going to pray something and then just follow my lead as I pray. Um, but I want you to be thinking about something that needs to be healed in your life, especially your relationship with God, but even physically. And if there's some women out there you can't have babies, just for a few minutes, let's pray and trust God to do something supernatural in your life. I'm not saying you're going to walk out of here and have a pregnancy test in the parking lot, you're going to be, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but God does what he does. Amen. God does what he does. So let's all bow our heads and pray. Lord, it's so exciting when people come back and say, I prayed and this miracle happened in my life. What a coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence. It's the hand of God, the powerful hand of God. So right now, I just want you to be thinking about what needs to be healed in your life. Whether it's physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, relational, social. It's just something is out of whack. 
You are in bondage. God wants to open your eyes to how much he loves you. God wants to open your eyes to maybe you are that person that is so accustomed to failure that you are just stuck and you're scared to take a step of faith and walk out into what God has destined for you. Maybe that needs to be healed, your perspective. So if everybody right now can just put your hands on your thighs and palms to the sky like you are going to receive something. Palms up to the sky like you're going to receive something. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. You said that you would send the promise, the Holy Spirit, that we may be baptized in the Holy Spirit, that we may be witnesses, spiritual witnesses, powerful witnesses to you in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. But we first need a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. We need a healing, a cleansing. We need you to set us free. So I pray for healing of legs and ankles and livers and kidneys and cancer, women who can't have babies. Lord, you are the God who opens wombs. You created the womb. You opened so many wombs in the Bible. Hannah, Rachel, Mary, so many wombs in the Bible of women who couldn't have babies. And those babies that came forth glorified you and they did many miracles. So we pray now that you open wombs and you would let these women know that it was you who did it. We pray you heal cancer. We pray you heal relationships. I pray, Lord, that you help encourage people right now to tell them they are not a failure. They are your child. That you have great plans for them, plans to give them a future and a hope. That you can do exceedingly abundantly more than they can ask or imagine. And I pray they believe that. I declare God's power in your life, God's freedom in your life, God's vision in your life, God's courage in your life. That you would walk out of here saying, I am going to do what God called me to do. I'm not going to believe the lie anymore. I'm not going to walk around like a mummy wrapped up, bound up by the Satan's lies anymore. And Lord, mostly there may be people here who need you to be their Savior. If you need Christ to forgive you of your sin, pray this prayer in the privacy of your heart. Pray, dear God, please forgive me of my sin. Come live in my heart and be my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. As our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed, if you prayed that prayer at the very end to ask Christ to be your Savior, in 30 seconds I'm going to ask you to stand up. And by standing up, you are declaring, yes, I am walking into my destiny. I'm walking into my new life. So if you prayed that prayer and you are proud of it, you're faithful, you know that God loves you, he, he has a plan for your life. But if you prayed that prayer to ask Christ to be your Savior, on the count of three, stand to your feet. One, two, three. Stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. Stand to your feet. God bless you. 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 Real quick, if you are standing, I'm going to ask you to come down to the altar. Let's give them a hand. They come on down. If you're standing, come down to the altar. If you're in the balcony, walk up and come around. Come on. Let's give them a hand. Come on, church. Let's go.